Hello and welcome to Springboard of Virtual University. My name is Albert Okran, welcoming you on behalf of Team Springboard led by Comfort. This is your most inspirational show and the point where the greatest minds in the world converge. Springboard is brought to you by the Springboard Ratio Foundation and proudly sponsored by MTN Pulse, UMB Bank, the Enterprise Group, with support from our media gurus, the multimedia group, and the graphic communications group. So, the past month has been absolutely phenomenal in the engine room with frontliners in various fields trying to explore the what, the why, the where, the whom, the how, the hidden parts of their lives you don't get to see when they stand on stage or they apply their craft just to encourage somebody starting out there that it can be done and these are the principles you need to follow. So far we've had Diana Hamilton, Israel Lai, Ajitya Annan, and then Anita Eskin on the show. Today I have a very fine young man I really admire on the set with me and in the studios with me. The first time I saw him I was a judge for MTN Heroes of Change and he sang at the final. I said this guy has a unique talent. He would go on to win seven nominations at the Ghana Music Awards in 2019, a couple of years later, and then in the very next year, win the Artist of the Year and High Life Artist of the Year. By now, you know who I'm talking about, the one and only Kwame Eugene. Kwame, good to see you. Good to see you, Rev. I like your name, Kwame Eugene. Yeah. The first night I saw you at the National Theatre or Conference Centre, I said, this guy has a very unique talent. And I'm happy for you that you've come so far. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know you are quite young, but did you think that you would go into music in this big way when you were growing up? Um, I knew I was going to do mu music definitely because I mean I had a gift for it. And if I sing, people were like, whoa, you have something. But I mean, I was a young boy who was being nurtured in Fadama. And it's not easy in Fadama. So my whole plan was how to get my in my craft to be heard even if i'm from fadama that was that was my whole mission tell me about growing up in fadama was it rough it was super rough it was <laughs> i like that super rough it was super rough tell i mean it's, it's, it's fadama it's, there's gambling there is i mean there, there is hardness there is hardship there is there is um rowdiness i mean there, there, i mean anything anything just it is fadama that is it's, it's, I think it's one of our most um, hoodie neighborhood in the country. And that is where I come from. So growing up in Fadama was a bit rough. But then again, I was raised by a, a, a strong pay, uh, mom. And yeah, my mom to be precise. She was very strong and my dad was strong as well. But my dad is the let me mind my business kind of a person. But my dad, my mom's, uh, my mom's thing is your business is my business right. your well-being is my well-being so very engaging yes if, if you're going wrong i'm going wrong with you and i make sure i bring you back on point right so being raised by difficult and a strong mom from farama is actually what helped me to emerge from there what what in your opinion was the biggest deposit of thought that your mother made in you what was her philosophy of thought i think it is about um, first, God first, man will follow. Mm. And the second one was make everything work. That is if it can work. Make everything work that if it can work. If it can work. Help me to understand that okay. and how it has influenced you. So she used to go by make it work if it can work. Because I think her house today where she's living, she started, with, she started investing in the house with 15 Ghana cities. Just 15 cities. And today she owns a house. Even though, I mean, God being so good, I blew up quite early to help her to complete it. But she started with 15 Ghana cities, which was a motivation. It inspired me. Like, okay, if she can start a whole house with 15 cities, that means if I start something and I believe it is possible to be able to be done, I can do it. That is her policy. If you, you know it can be done, Make sure you finish it. Right. So you, I apply it in everywhere I am. Even when I'm putting music together, I, 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 I can actually estimate how long and how big I want this music to go. So I put in my all. If I want it to be accepted in certain areas, I have 
I have to go find some keywords that I'll put it in there so that it can be accepted everywhere in those places. Because if it can be done, why not do it? And that was directly a result of your mom's influence. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. What's her name? Let's celebrate it. What's her name? She's Juliana Enima Mafu. Madam Juliana Enima Amwafu. Yeah. Mafu. Mafu. That's my surname. M A R F O. Right. We, we, we thank God for her life and for, for who she, she has been to you. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about music growing up. You said you always thought you would do music. Yeah. What was your first encounter in music? Um, I think, I mean, you know, the normal, the regular Ghanaian singing in the bathroom is, is always our first encounter. You know? <laughs> we all think we are perfect singers in the bathroom. So it's time from there. My mom used to say, and you know, I would see you, who the call talent you, Uncle? Where we need? She used to say wow. that. Yes. She used to say that when I'm taking a shower because I, I would sing the, I would sing throughout. But I think the first encounter was at church. I'm from, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a Presbyterian. So we had something among our presbytery where musical groups from, I mean, churches, locals will go together in one church and we will all sing. And my local was the only one. So I presented Carrie's congregation from New Fadama and I was performing and it was so nice. People were so happy to an extent that the stage actually collapsed. The stage collapsed. Like, Are you jumping? No, everybody was, was in the mood. Everybody was in the mood, but we forgot. I mean, probably the stage was, well, well, I mean, was weaker than all of us standing on it and it collapsed. So people started saying, hey, come and come to the stage. No, hey, come and come to the stage. No, boo -boo. So I think it started from there. And I, I got quite popular in church, in the, in the presbytery. So I started being invited to churches to perform and all. But then again, that help to leave the ghetto wasn't there because... It was important for me to, I mean, find myself. That's what was the most important. And I needed, I needed some leverage. I needed some validation. And it comes with money. It comes with funds. And that was what I was just waiting for. So God being so good, finally met my label. And they, they did a lot of investments for me. And I'm here today. Let's explore the, the hit maker. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's designed for people like you. You have the talent, nobody knows you, you are mm -hmm. hiding somewhere, yeah. and they say, listen, even if you don't have a label, if you, don't, if you have nothing, just come out there and then just do it. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a, I, I still think it's one of the beautiful things that MTN has done. It's, but it's beautiful. Help me to find out how did you hear about it and what was the experience like competing on that, on that platform? I think I, I first saw the MTN Himeka on TV, and that was two years ago, even before I joined MTN Himeka. Um, we saw it on TV and I was like, yo, it's an icon competition. I think then I was 18, 17, 18, yes. And I think I was, I was so young for the show. Because I saw people on that very moment were quite older. And you know Ghana, when you are so little, people don't take you serious. So I had to wait two more years to prepare myself very well for the hitmaker. And I waited that two more years. And I mean, I, I, I went for auditions, I was picked, and from there, that's where everything, the shooting starts, started, I mean, launching itself. So you, so you heard about a hit maker in your teens, but you just couldn't go your three Yeah, but I was, I was just too young, for it. I had to wait two more years. But do you think if you had gone at the time, you'd have won? I don't think so. I don't think so, because it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be because maybe somebody will do better than me. It would just be because... After leaving a reality show at the age of probably 17, 18 years, my possibility of making it than somebody who is, I mean, of age to be a star in Ghana here, you know, because our system is not like, I mean, the worst thing, how their system, I mean, you can be Justin Bieber and blow up at the age of 16. People blow up 17, 18, 19. But here in Africa, you need to be of age to be able to be a star in this country. I think then again, I was... I can still even say I was the youngest artist ever to emerge in Ghana at my age. Because I had Angela when I was just 19 years old. Oh, was, was, that your, was, that a, was Angela the turning point in your life? Yes. Tell me about it. Angela, Angela, Angela made me who I am. Angela, I mean, I, 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 I first had my flight ticket because of Angela. Somebody had to fly me all the way from here to UK to come sing Angela for his wife. Oh, really? Was it yeah, yeah, yeah. Called, was it, it was, it was a wedding. Was the wife called Angela? 
Yes, the wife was called Angela. Chale. They were James and Angela. They flew me all the way to London to come sing Angela for the woman. Wow. And, and I think it was it was one of the few times I ever bought a plane and it was it was an amazing feeling. I had to think like, yo, me this. Chale. Yeah. So Angela was a turning point for me. It made me. So, well, but was Angela the song that you, you sang at Hitmaker? No, 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 no. I, I never released Angela. I wrote Angela after I got signed. I sang a Baye Ye, um, um, I mean, some old songs, and I did some renditions from other um, popular songs out there. But then again, I didn't sing Angela there. Angela was after I was signed by Linkson Stadium. Right. So, so you got signed, you sang Angela, and then the world was like, boom. boom. Like, who is this young boy? And by then, Ghana was in, we weren't new to small boys blowing up this big. It was just, I mean, an adult, let me, let me put it that way. And I was, I, I would say I was the first young boy at that age to blow up that big to go international. Yeah, because when, when I came, it was, it was a say, I called the Eshatawale, Stone Boy, Kwabna, Kwabna. I'm just curious about what inspires your creativity. Some people write songs wake up in the middle of the night with a, a line or a verse. Do you play instruments? Almost all. Almost all the Almost instruments. All the instruments. Tell us about it. I play, I play guitar. I play the bass guitar. I play, I play the drums. I play the keyboard. I play the trumpet as well. I play, um, I play the harmonica as well. What? I play a bit of... Bass, guitar, drums, keyboard. Yes. Harmonica. Yes. I play a bit of flute. Oh. How do you learn all these instruments? Music has been my life. I think that is the secret. Music has just been my life. I've been all about music all my life. It's, it's always music for me. So I didn't even have time to... I've not, I've not had time to do proper clubbing and partying. Yeah. I've spent all my time learning. So when knowing all these instruments, mm -hmm. if you are composing a song, yeah. like let's say Angela, do you take a guitar, start strumming it, and then as you strum it, I, 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 I learned a bit of guitar, and one of my regrets in life is not following that, that passion. <laughs> my wife says I, I deceived her because when I was coming to propose to her, I played a guitar, mm -hmm. and then and then sang a few. It was I, just I, a oh, so, yeah, <laughs> CFG and then DG. That's Charlie, all. Once I was able to play the song and I convinced her after I got married, I did that. That's all. Charlie, I that. That's all. But that, that. <laughs> but. Do you start strumming the guitar and then and then the, the notes just come? It, it depends. Or I think. How did how did the songs come? Music is natural. It's it's natural. It, it needs to come to you. Normally, when you go to music, I don't think it makes much of waves because it wasn't natural. Really? It was yes. So you must not sit down that I'm going to write a song. Sometimes you can sit down and write a song. A song like "Wish Me Well." I I sat down and wrote "Wish Me Well" because of what I was going through that very moment. Tell me about that. Because I was, I was, I think it was my first, let me say, my first confrontation song. Hey, yeah. like a century. Kasenji Kaka. It was confrontation. <laughs> very confrontation. Tell me about that one. So, um, after having Angela, people, I, I mean, people started saying that uh, this one hit wonder boys, they will come and go right now. I mean, I was hearing that a lot and I, I did confusion. And they who. It will come and go. I mean, I had people saying it on radio and on TV. It's not like they are saying it behind my back. You know, Ghana, they say it on TV for you to see. Say, yeah, can't you? Say, so, oh, we want it to that. baby. So, being able to do that. So, after Angela followed with Confucian, then Adrifi came, then Never Carry Last. It, it, it was back to back. I thought people were going to stop saying, he won't blow again. But the more I was becoming successful in the music, side of of my 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 life the more the stress and the attacks kept coming and i didn't get it because i was a young boy who joined the music industry thinking it was just a free and fair free and fair industry where you you just do good and people do good back and we all have fun and we go it's not, not knowing it's, it's not it's not like that it's, it's really? not free and fair like that Tell me. there's there's a there's a there's a price to pay people don't care about the normal human vulnerability they, they don't care about how vulnerable you are. They, they, don't, they don't feel your pain. So I, I, I sat down one day with pain. It's one of the few times I had pain in my heart while I was writing a song. And I wrote, if you wish me well, I will wish you well. 
and I've heard my mom tell me that oh, mini me who near cost you now, but Kwame Nyao be a nipa beka. And I had to go put in a song Nyao be a nipa beka, and she said yeah be a nipa beka by enjoy my name. So I had to put in a song Nyao be a nipa beka by God be my provider. And once I mean you be a bonnet yet. If you wish me well, I definitely wish you well. But if you don't wish me well, I'll stay in my corner. So out of your pain, you wrote the song, That's how wish, I me well. wish me well. And so then some your mom, comes and your mom calls you to say, Charlie, hold fast, and then you add those words to the yeah, song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Charlie, when you, when you made money from that song, you didn't get you something to your mom. No, she did, she's okay, man. She's okay. <laughs> she, everything I have is hers. If you just joined us, this is Springboard, your virtual university. I'm hanging out with the, the one and only Kwame Eugene telling me about how how the MTN Hitmaker provided a platform. First of all, how beginning to sing in the ghetto and then how MTN Hitmaker was the turning point that brought him to the limelight. And then of course, after having signed, been signed on by his label, the song Angela, he calls the turning point that changed everything. He says, Angela made him board the plane to go to London to go and sing for James and Angela at their wedding. Charlie, if your name is Angela, you know what to do when you have a wedding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been signed for Georgina Benedicta. You know so you that the name, the name will go in different directions and then, and then the will come. Uh -huh. so, so you compose based on, on different things, how you feel, what you are thinking. It, are there some that come by inspiration? Yeah, a lot. A lot. I mean, Obiato, I was inspired one day. With Obiato, I was inspired one day with how my songs gets reception when it's out there because people literally can sing my song from beginning to end how does it make you feel it makes me feel good it makes me feel inspired mm. like, okay i'm actually doing something good and it makes me go back to see my lyrics so i'll probably not put sorry to say chav there to lead people because I, I figured a lot of people listen to me so let's talk about lyrics mm -hmm. you you are you the kind who says because are you saying that because your fans pay attention so much to your lyrics, mm -hmm. you are careful about what you put in your songs? Is that what you're I'm saying? very careful. You don't I'm sing profane? I'm, I'm very, very careful because I have all kinds of people listening to my music. I have really old people, very old people listening to my music. I've had videos of old women saying, Kwam Yuji or Hema, Metekra, and BBM. I've had young people sing my music and I've, I've seen very, very little people. Um, um, vibing to my music and it makes me really think deep when I'm putting lyrics together. How it's, it's, is this going to affect people out there? Is it going to have good effects or bad effects on people out there? And I try as much as possible to make um, um, the good side of every lyrics that I put out there much bigger and higher than I mean how much playful or maybe irrelevant things I'll put in the music. So I try as much as possible to put a message in there. So every music that I put out there has message. I don't just put message there. I try as much as possible. As much as possible. That means it's not easy to try and put message in every music you put out there. But then again, I think if this is a music and it's, it's my kind of way to kind of evangelize that is what I focus on doing because evangelize. I yeah, because I mean it's it, it's evangelism. I mean, really spreading word. Tell me about that. I'm a pastor, so when you use words like that, you get me excited. Yes. So you think music is evangelism? Music is evangelism. It's a spreading word. I think it's even move faster than how uh, how you can go door to door to talk to people about something. So what kind of word? I mean, are you spreading good morals? Are you spreading societal transformation? Are you spreading the the, the, the word of God? When you say music is evangelism and it's more effective, tell me about it. I'm very curious. It's, it's more effective because, like I said earlier on, music is waves. And waves goes far. I mean, how, how high can you scream? But speakers can go higher than a human voice. And, and radio can spread a lot of message at a very particular time. And that's what music does. So if music is being played at weddings, being played at engagements, churches, everywhere, that is spreading a message. So it depends on what kind of music that it's being played. That is where you derive the kind of message that's being sent from. So, so, so do you see yourself as an evangelist? I see myself as an evangelist, one that spreads good morals. Wow. I put good morals out there. Because so, when I keep telling you, if you wish me well, I'll wish you well. This is a message telling you that once you, you wish somebody that's close to you well, it, it, it's... it's 
it 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 enhances them being able to wish you well as well. That is where the enthusiasm comes from because you are wishing the person well. I mean, other than Papa who are dreaming, who sir, then I have to start thinking about him too. That is hand go hand come. That is wish me well. So do you do you rap extempo as well? Do you do you do you rap extempo? I'm I'm just curious about the various dimensions of music. I didn't get a chance to pursue. I, I sang a lot. Mm -hmm. Did you did you do a lot of gospel? Oh. Well, so much. I was, I was, I'm, I've, I've been a church boy all my life. I was, I was born in the church, and so gospel. Yeah, I've been, I've been. So I was singing gospel as well when I was, mm -hmm. when I was in secondary school. So when I was singing in a group called Calvary Road, and we used to do evangelism. And you call yourself an evangelist. So we have two things in common. We are both singing gospel, and we are both, we are both evangelists, mm -hmm. as it were. But I'm just curious. So about the various dimensions of music, do mm -hmm. you? Can you rap extempo? Like, do you? Is it part of your genre? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's anything that sounds good for the 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 sound I'm hearing at a very particular time. If you call me for a feature, it depends on what beat you play for me. Like, example, Happy Day with Sarkodie. He sent me the song with a rap. It's a beautiful, brand new day. I figured, you know, let me let me this with this whole concept. Let me do something that. Is talking about praising God, right? Because He's done some for us, and we need to appreciate it. So I'm saying, everybody, give glory. Yes, so we don't mean nani. Everybody, give glory. Yes, so we don't mean nani. Parawami, see your baby. It's the order of pain. Jojojo, I give you praise, oh bro, 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 bro. I give you praise, oh Jojo, Jojo. So I'm saying take your, your praise because you deserve this. I'm giving you praise. That's why I want you to come and take your praise. I figured the rap, with the rap is doing, it will, it will do good when I put kind of a gospel chorus on it. I did, and I did a different thing for um, um, uh, Otiame Kwame. Because of his message. So if the message calls for me putting some raps in there. I think I'll do it since I have the talent to do it because the the pace at which a rapper can express himself is actually always enough than a singer. Because I mean when you go to a musical school they teach you with with we we music singing and rap goes with loops. But what comes with singing is if you sing every four bar, you can even spend singing four bar with just four messages, because one bar explains one message. When I come back from this break, I'm going to find out about education. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find out about the technical aspects of music, mm -hmm. and then find out about the part that people, if they knew, they wouldn't even say they want to be singers. I'm just enjoying Kwame Eugene. There's something about him that is very compelling, and I could do this all day long, and he's telling us about growing up in a tough ghetto in Fadama and, and singing in the Presbyterian church, and the day he sang and the stage collapsed. This is too good, I'm telling you. We'll go for a break and Nicole will tell us about patience. And when I come back, I'll find out from him how patience has brought him where he is. And we'll also get a message from our sponsors, including MTN, that gave him the platform to become the hit maker that he is today. Please don't go away. Nicole, take it, take it up. Patience. A study published in the Harvard Business Review showed that about 90% of participants said their restraint or patience was an asset in terms of fulfilling their long-term goals for career success. Having a long-term perspective helps to make deliberate choices that are aligned to your purpose. Restraint helps to prevent career burnout and exhaustion. As Coach John Wooden says, worthwhile accomplishments and acquisitions take time. The better the reward, the more time it takes to acquire. Here are three ways to develop patience. One, think with purpose. Two, think long-term. Three, reflect on situations. Our question for today is, is the ladder you are climbing leaning against the right wall? What must you do differently? Don't be left out. Download the Pulse app from the App Store or Play Store to mash up all day, every day. You can also enjoy more mashup. Just buy the new Mega Bundle and get 3 gigabytes data, extra 400 megabytes for your social apps, and free MTN to MTN calls every Monday. So go ahead, feel the pulse on MTN Pulse.
Just be. We're good together. Everywhere you go. There once was a man who had it all. He had skill. He had charisma. He was loved by all, but above all, he knew the importance of helping others, lifting others up. He knew the importance of giving other people an advantage so that they too would use that advantage to help others. All you need is that advantage that sets you apart from the rest. And when you discover that advantage, life's challenges don't seem so daunting anymore. That's where we come in. Enterprise, your advantage. UMB was established in 1972 as the premier bank for the corporate and private sector in Ghana. From our very beginning, as the only Ghanaian bank serving all categories of businesses, we set a standard for excellence and innovation over the past 45 years. We've built a financially healthy and strong bank, demonstrated our commitment to our customers and to growing businesses, and exhibited originality and innovation at every turn. At UMB, our focus is built around people, service, products, and technology. These are the key to our present success and our future triumphs. At UMB, we're poised to make a difference not only with our customers, but also in the banking industry. We invite you to share in our future, our future starts now with you. Welcome back to Springboard, your virtual university brought to you by the Springboard Ratio Foundation in partnership with the Multimedia Group and proudly sponsored by MTN Pulse, UMB Bank, the enterprise group with support from the Graphic Communications Group. On Tuesday in the Graphic, just find in the Graphic Business a transcription of this entire interview and find out about the life and times of my guest for tonight, the fascinating Kwame Eugene. I saw this young man and I said, this young man has talent and he has proved me far more than right. Kwame, before we went on the break, mm -hmm. Nicole spoke about patience in the, in the segment that she spoke about. How has patience worked out in your... Is this something that you've had to exercise in, in, in honing your craft? I think um, to to be able to go on with this kind of craft that I'm involved in, you have to. Patience is a key point. Patience is actually a key point because you can't you you can't do this thing without patience. Mm. It's you need to apply it everywhere. I mean, in your interviews, in your appearances, performances. In everywhere, every, your exposures, everything, it comes with patience. So it's 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 what makes us who as artists. Yeah. Are there things that you learned, let's say, ten years ago that you never got a chance to use, and you had to wait until ten, twelve years time before you got to use them? Lens. Talking about patience, I mean, like. Um. No, 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 not yet. So are there songs you are there songs that you wrote long time ago? You ended up publishing it, probably or recording it. 
Songs, Hello. okay, with songs, if you're talking about songs, I think I have quite a number of them I, I, I wrote when I was in high school, but I didn't get the opportunity to release them. Are you now, likely, I'm, still are you likely, not, I'm still not getting the opportunity to release them. Are you likely to release some of them one day? I'm sure, but it's just because music is evolving and, and it doesn't stay like it was before. Right. You know, I do highlight music. I've been, right. I've been highlight yeah. artists of the year in the country for four years in a row. Wow. Yes, and me being the High Life Artist of the Year for four years in a row. Still, my music doesn't sound like or Boba Adolfo or Amachi Dede or or Lido. We try as much as possible to make it sound a bit like them, so that we we can't go wayward from how life. I mean, the authentic how life music that people see it. But then again, music is evolving; it, it changes. So with time, you have no option than to do what is trending. Else, you have to go play your music too. Uh, um, I mean, those of that age to listen to it. And now, with, with streaming numbers, we have to do what the young people want. That's how we can, we can get food. So before we came on there, you were playing one of these traditional old-time gospel yeah. songs they play at funerals and events and so on. And you were singing it very, very fluently and saying mm -hmm. it was a favorite. I was trying to remember what song it was. It was one of those. I haven't asked many. I think it was... Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so that, that, that's old school, super old, old school, school very old school, very, type very old music. School. You still listen to them a lot, a yes. lot. I actually listen to them all the time. I listen to them more than the, the, the music, um, that, that I've been recorded these days. What do you listen to them for inspiration, just for, for taking yourself away from? from the kind of music that is being played today? I, it's, I don't want to go away from the kind of music that has been played today. But the thing is, they have, they, they have a different way of presenting their message that I think is so brilliant. They, have, they just have a different way of presenting their message. They, they go into details about what they are talking about. Right. So their music is like a prayer. A story. I don't see it like a story. I, say, I, I see it as a prayer. Right. Because... Um, um, I remember when we used to be in, in Fadama. My mom wakes up every dawn and pray. And she would pray, she would sing those songs. But when she's cooking out there, you can tell with regards to the kind of prayer points, I mean, she was talking to God about, it leads to that kind of song she's singing when she's, she's probably washing or cooking in the morning. Because I was there when she was praying, and she go like, eh, I don't be a queen, be my queen, my mommy. Yeah, that, that used to be her prayer. And it, it wasn't easy. It took her a long while for her to survive. And we, are, we were all trying to strive together in Fadama then. And when, after praying, she just come and sit down and start sing, singing a song like, And the song is very detailed to an extent that it explains her prayer points. Right. Because she's been praying about this same thing for a long time. And it looks like it's not being answered. So she's singing, said, I mean... So there's a third song that you are describing mm -hmm. that the lyrics were influenced by your mother. Either something she said to you, something she prayed about. This is not my song. This is uh, Reverend Asumeni and T.Y.'s right. song. Oh, okay. So those, but it that's explains, why the song connects to you. It explains the kind okay. of prayer she's praying. So the reason why I'm so attached to the old... Um, um, the old kind of gospel is because their presentation explains more, and it's like a prayer. If if you can if you can know the words conk like that, you don't even have to pray. You can just say it. It's it's like a whole prayer. That's that's just why I like the beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. How many days, hours, years of preparation do you need to be able to release a good hit song? What what kind of I don't think with, with a hit song, you need, you need um, um, maximum time of preparation. You don't need preparation when it comes to time. Because you can put music together today, release it today, and it will go as far as you will never imagine. But you need preparation on how to release it, mm. where to release it, the fans to release it. So it's not how long you, you have to put the song together. Mm, okay. You can put a song together today and release it today. 
we've had songs where we just we didn't prepare for it. Like I have one big song. It's one of my biggest songs in the UK, Akushika. I recorded the song in the studio, and we just it was just there, so we just put it on the album. Before we realized, it was the biggest song in in, in the African uh, fraternity in the UK. So like Akushika, like I was saying, um, defines the fact that it's not about how long you prepare the song. It's about how well you prepare how to release the song. The venue, the location. The location, where to release it, the fans for it. I find that sometimes a person can release a song. One of, one of the big arguments I used to have with my friend, the late Danny Netty. Danny Netty? Yes. I used to have a lot of debates with him about music. We traveled to, to Nigeria, to Gambia on the Springboard show, and he composed a theme song for Springboard. And so we'll sit into the night and discuss music. And I used to ask him questions about why, at that time, a particular Nigerian artist had released a song that had just two words. We mm -hmm. talked about four bar music and so on. The, the song had just two words. And it became a hit all across the, the continent. Yeah. And I was wondering why songs that had all the complexity and the lyrics and the bridge and the descants and the everything were not making it. And this yeah, person yeah. with just one chorus was just making it. And I was wondering, is that is that a style of music appreciation? It's just, it's like it's like what I said earlier on. Music is evolving, and and what is happening is people have less time these days. Okay, they have less time to see whatever plenty lyrics you are putting together. So they want, I mean, people want to do things the quick way these days. So you need to try as much as possible to summarize everything you have. So if, if now music, music used to be five minutes, six minutes. Now music is two minutes. Right. Music lasts for just two minutes. It used to be six minutes, five minutes, seven minutes. I mean, Sometimes I'm actually, they had 15 minutes, minutes yeah. 10 minutes. But now music is two minutes. As far as you can go is three minutes. So how do you hold the audience spellbound in three minutes? What's the secret? Yes. So you, you summarize everything, like I said earlier on. You have to summarize the message you want to tell them, put it together, make it very snappy. Because now people don't have time. And they are being, they're, they're, we're having a lot of musicians every single day. People are changing their mind because they think they have the talent and the ability to sing all the time. And people want to do music all the time now. So we are getting more musicians like before. And now, um, um, having a, med a medium to do music is, is not difficult. I mean, now I, I can produce my music on my tablet. First, when I, when I used to be in Fadama, I had to gather money, go buy speaker, go buy amp, and go buy microphone and all. But now, you can just have your microphone, sound card in your bag, and you can have all the softwares on a, a tablet like this. And you can do everything. You can produce your music. And I, I remember I wrote my Rockstar album on, on a tour to UK. So when Going I say, back when, and when forth. I Rockstar, is it what? Africa number one. Beautiful. We didn't come here to play. Chale. <laughs> and you were going on a tour to UK. Now what happened? Yes, I was, I was on a tour to UK and I was writing my whole album on, in a plane. Because now I can produce on my laptop. My, my MacBook will do everything for me. When I get to the hotel, I have my sound card and my, my, my microphone in the bag. I just mount it like that. I have my beat by Jay, put it on. I can record, get everything done, and I can send it to somebody in Ghana to mix it. So now... Uh, um, um, the, the availability to music is so frequent in, in, in our current society. If, there is, there's a recording studio in every two blocks, every corner, every area. I mean, yeah, so now people are doing music and we don't have time to listen to one person for six minutes. That is what's happening. If music is so accessible, mm -hmm. if the tablets have made it so easy, yeah. Why are so many budding musicians trying to break through and struggling? Still underground. Yes. Help us to understand. It is because the bigger it gets, the more the the, the more it, it 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 allows people to sieve the music down. If you get what I mean. Now people need to sieve it down. They have to wear which one they prefer. 
Okay. And that's where the difficulty comes so in. Like so now, like competition. To, to be able to make it in the music industry, you have to be extremely talented. It's not like before. You can sing, join a band, and before you realize you're a band leader and you start doing music. If you can bear witness with me, it, it used to be like that. A lot of... Um, um, I think it, it was before I was born, but with experience and a few things I've read, most of our, our big celebrities used to be band leaders. Do you get it? Right. So you can start from a church, lead a band before you realize you, 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 you go record your own song, then you, you become a celebrity. But now, because it is everywhere, we have to accept the best. And it's difficult to get the best because now everybody is doing it. If, if you go to probably a university that has, um, um, let's say, 100 people, you can get 20 people who think they can be musicians. So, to, so many more people are trying to play their craft. People are trying it's to because join people like you now. who have succeeded too much in a short yes, time. Yes, that is why you need to be extremely talented or you should have some favor. Some people have, just have some favor. The song may not be the best song in the world, but then again, it goes everywhere. What kind of favor are you talking about? Oh, a lot of people have favor that I probably won't, don't want to mention names. Right. But then again, you can tell... Oh, is this it, is song it favor in terms of contact with the right people? Is it favor in terms of God's blessings? What kind of it's favor it? in terms of God's blessings. I mean, uh, um, meeting the right people to put your music on is about whom you know. I don't think that is favor. That that is that that is friendship. Okay. But I'm talking about the favor of God that you just have some divine blessing that if you put the song there, regardless of the song being the the noisiest song in the world, it will still blow and get to every corner. People are doing music you, you call a new band, Sweeney. But then again, it's being played everywhere. And that's what I'm talking about. Right. Let me ask about education. Yeah. You grew up in Fadama. Yes. Were you schooling? I was schooling. I, I was in Salvation Army Senior High School. Then I moved there to Accra to come complete senior high school. And from there, I had to go study music at the um, and from studying music, I did my diploma in studying music, which I want to do my master's soon. What was the direction of your formal education at first before you studied music? It was, it was I mean, how every regular Ghanaian boy would go to the nursery, from nursery to GSS, GSS to SHS, SHS to tertiary. Yeah. My, my mom loved education. So, I mean, we were four siblings. Everybody, my mom made sure, will proper, proper have good education. God bless your mom. You've mentioned that quite a few times, and I think I... I'm, Shout out to I'm, my dad, too. Shout out to my dad, too. Yeah. My, my, dad, my dad has been very helpful for, to the whole family. But then again, on my side, people keep saying, why do I always mention my mom's name? I don't mention my dad's name. Because you should, you, should, you should hear my sister speak as well. Always speaking about my dad. Yeah. So you're balancing it. Yeah, I think we, we came from that kind of a family. My dad had more of his focus on my sister and my, my other brothers. And my mom had her focus on me. Right. That is why I have more stories with my mom more than my dad. It's not like my dad didn't take care of me. You didn't just, praying to give you the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a lot of memories with my, my mom more. Can you, you, mentioned, you mentioned a channel you can't He's a big, a big friend of this Springboard Foundation. He's, he's, he's he like comes here quite a bit. Come again, please. He's like a godfather to you? Yeah. Right. I mean, I learned a lot of things from him. Right. Have you done a collaboration together? Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah. That's a recent one. Yeah, the recent one. Right. Before that, we have another song, "You Know Be My Matter," but it was on his album, so it didn't. It didn't. It wasn't as big as "Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Too big. Yeah. That's nice. Let's talk about your life after winning the Artist of the okay. Year in 2020. How did it change your life? It changed quite a lot of things. Like I said earlier on, and people don't forgive you for normal human vulnerabilities anymore. And they, they, they think you, you're special. So people try to put things in a more insidious way because, oh, yeah, it's just of the year. And this is all Kasasi, and this is all Yesi, and this is all Tanasi. And it, it makes it quite difficult for, for, I mean, because you can't make everybody happy. This is what we find ourselves. We, we are doing a craft where we can make everybody happy. So we try as much as possible to make those who are ready to be happy, happy. That's it. And, and we just move on. So the artists of the year, it comes with a lot of backlash and it comes with a lot of pressure. 
and people actually cross fingers waiting For to see fall. if you could make it again. Let me, let me, let me find out from you. I mean, you, when you were small, you wanted to be big. Mm -hmm. Now that you are big, you are realizing that being big is not, not as nice as it looks it's from. Yeah, it's but, 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 but I'm sure between being small and being big, you still think they're big. Of course. I, mean, it, I, I was saying some time ago that if, um, um, I mean, if there is another word, if there is reincarnation, I want to go back and come as Kwame Niji. Wow. Again, Why? Yes. Because I think I have something only a few people in the world has. It, it, it's, it makes me special. It makes me special. And, the, and, the, and the, the favor of anything I touch turns into gold. I, I, it's something I want to have again. But that's a very powerful statement. Yeah. You are contented, aren't you? I'm super happy. I'm excited. I bless God all the time for making me me. Mm. I was saying, one, what my biggest fear is waking up one day and I won't be me again. Uh, I wake up and, I mean, when I go out, people don't refer to me as Rockstar. Like, ah. As a son, uh, How did the name Rockstar come up? Me coming from the rocks and being a star. Because I mean, life yourself. wasn't easy. Yeah. Yeah. My mom says this all the time. Life wasn't easy. Because, I mean, I'm from the rocks and finally I'm here today. So coming from the rocks and being a star, I merged the two and I, I think I got Rockstar. So it's not the Rockstar with guitar and making, I mean... Yeah. It sounds like that. Doing rock music. Okay. But my rock star, that's the definition for my rock star. And then when I say rock star, then you say what? Africa number one. African number one. You didn't come here to joke. No, no, no. Hey, Charlie, I like that. All right. Let me, let, me, let me just tell you my 10 lessons I've picked from this beautiful conversation. And then when I, when I come back to you, I'm going to ask you to, to speak to those who are from the rocks, but who are not yet stars. Oh... Just tell them something, Charlie. Just hear it from you. Eh? One minute, it will change their lives. These are my 10, 10 lessons from Kwame Eugene. Number one, he says, he grew up, growing up, he grew up in a rough neighborhood and started singing in church. And his inaugural performance broke the stage. But that became also the leverage and the platform to step out of the ghetto and begin to explore his career. Lesson number two. Role model. His mother is his biggest icon, biggest role model. And he says she's the greatest influence in his life, his faith, his character, his philosophy, and even the lyrics of his songs. Even praying for him and encouraging him provided lyrics for some of his songs. Number three is about the MTN hit maker. He says he heard about the hit maker in his teens, but had to wait a couple of years to participate or compete. And he thanks God that he did because that made him more mature and more ready to sail on from there to become who he was or who he is. Fourth one is Angela. He says, Angela made me. That was a turning point. And his first travel to the UK was to perform Angela at the wedding of James and Angela. The fifth one is about composition. He says, music comes naturally. And he, he plays different instruments but he composes differently for different situations for instance um the way angela came was different from the way confusion came and when angela came they said this is a one-off then he did confusion hoping that they would stop and they still said it after a number of tracks until he realized they were not changing their minds and he composed a song if you wish me well to tell them listen Charlie, leave me alone to perform my craft <laughs> and then on on lyrics he says he has all kinds of people listening to his lyrics and therefore he feels a sense of responsibility to communicate a good message. And so every song has at least a message in it. Even if there's a place of fun and everything, there still is some message hidden somewhere. Number seven is about my favorite, evangelism. He says, music is a more effective means of evangelism than any other form. He says, he sees himself as an evangelist spreading good morals and he also tends to like old-time music because the, the words in it are like a prayer. Number eight, he says the industry is not kind and is quite unforgiving. And especially, um, it doesn't forgive your vulnerability or appreciate your vulnerability. He says that especially when you win awards and go higher, there is absolutely pressure on you. Number nine, he says... Music evolves. He says in his days of Adama, he would hire speakers, hire equipment just to do one show or one song, but today he does everything on his tablet. And that ease of releasing also means more pressure and more competition. To be able to stand out, you must have the talent 
and you must have the networks and you must have divine favor. The final one, another one that's my favorite, is about contentment. He says he thanks God every day for making him come to Eugene. And one of his biggest fears is to wake up one day and not become Eugene. I think I like that one. It's beautiful. Kwame, this is your microphone, this is your, your camera, mm -hmm. this is your audience, and especially those who come from the rocks want but, to but want to be stars. What would you tell them? Hi, Jerome Star Kwam Eugene. So, wherever you find yourself, and if things looks like, if, if it look, it's looking like things are not okay at the moment, I think all I will say is first, my mom will say, God first, then man will follow. And second, patience. You need to have patience for whatever you are doing, if that thing is going to work. If you have, if you have the zeal that this thing is surely going to work, have patience for it and never stop on and back and towards it. So be creative, be innovative, be strong, be hopeful, be optimistic. You have all the help. If there is no one, at least there is God in yourself. So start something, keep pushing. And again, God first, man will follow your rock star, Africa number one. Hey. We didn't come here to play. We didn't come here to, we can't come with all this, all this, all this, I mean, Walk all the way here, come and play. <laughs> you know, we didn't come to play. We came to bring out Kwame Eugene in the engine room on Springboard, your virtual university. Kwame, I've had a lot of fun listening to Same, you. Yeah. And I look forward to doing this again. When Actually, you win your next award, let's have another conversation. I know, I'll bring the award. Tell him, bring it you to have, You should have told me this earlier on after I brought everything. Don't yeah. worry, I'll, I'll show them on the screen for the benefit of your, Perfect. your, your Perfect. viewers thank you so much. and listeners. But a big thank you to you for coming and, and to all your fans Anytime. for Anytime. cheering you on and a special prayer for your mom, for your dad, for your family, for thank giving you. us Kwame Eugene. And one thing is certain. You won't wake up one day to find out you're not Kwame Eugene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will remain Kwame Eugene. I, will remember, I have to. <laughs> on behalf of MTN Pulse, the Enterprise Group, UMB Bank, the Multimedia Group, and the Graphic Communications Group. My name is Albert Okran from inside the engine room saying, God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. We are out. Yo, baby, and if I become, but God be my provider, he be my protector. So I don't go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Me, me, I will be a poor I don't do them many things. People say me and I day if you wish me well, I don't wish you well. We will never be a poor body. I don't do them many things. People say me and I day if you wish me well, I don't wish you well. Eva, Eva, I still fight for the paper. Of me now, no be later. No be later. Eva, Eva, I still fight for the paper. Of me now, no be later. I don't do them many things.